Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Once again, we thank God for a new day, a new opportunity to know him as our Lord and our Savior and to walk with him in faith and be transformed into the image of his son, Jesus Christ, for the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and know God. We're here this morning to study God's word, to learn of him, to understand his will and his ways for our lives so that we might walk worthily before him. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning so joyful for this opportunity that you have presented to us to choose you as our Lord and Savior. We choose you, Father, because you are good. And everything that is good comes from you. We thank you, Father, for our salvation. We thank you for your saving grace. And we just ask, Father, that you help us by renewing our minds so that we can understand the will and the ways that you would have us to walk on this earth. We thank you, Father, in Jesus Christ's mighty, mighty name. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue the lesson dedicating the temple. The daily devotional this morning is titled, Made Radiant by God's Presence. It's in the book of Exodus, chapter 34. Verses 29 to 35. And verse 29 says, And it came to pass, when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the Mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went to speak with him. Amen. The glory of God was upon the face of Moses because he draw nigh to God and spake with him. And we can expect for the glory of God to be upon us when we go to God in prayer and speak to him. Okay, we're in section two this morning, titled Solomon's Prayer of Dedication. And section 2a is titled Praising the Lord. From Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 12 through 17. And it reads, And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven nor in the earth which keepeth covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee 
with all their hearts. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. The commentary says, note, when, note where Solomon positioned himself for the dedication service. He stood before the altar. On a bronze scaffold he had constructed. Because he was a king and not a priest, King Solomon humbly dedicated the temple from outside the most holy place and not from within it. Humble King Solomon surrendered to protocol, recognizing the holy place and most holy place were both reserved for the priesthood alone. That's from Hebrews chapter 9 verses 1 through 7. This protocol was destined to remain in force until Messiah Jesus Christ came and suffered for our sins as both sacrifice and Savior, becoming our faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, thus establishing for himself the priesthood of all believers. Solomon's posture as he offered the dedicatory prayer is noteworthy. In the presence of all the people, he began from a standing position with hands outstretched toward heaven. He then knelt on both knees, that's in 2 Chronicles 6.13, demonstrating the same humility he had evidenced during his coronation. From this position, he extolled the virtues of the God of Israel and magnified his name. The beginning of Solomon's prayer is not unlike the manner Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Matthew 6, 9, or Paul's teaching that every petition is best begun with praise and thanksgiving from Philippians 4, 6. Section 2b, Praying for Favor. The reference is 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verses 18 through 42. And we'll start in verse 19. It says, Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant, and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servants prayeth before thee, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servants prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and make thou hearest, forgive, and when thou hearest, forgive. Now therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength, let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. O Lord God, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. The commentary speaks this way. Solomon's prayer indicated this house would stand in contrast to the shrines of the pagan gods in the nations that surrounded Israel. Among the pagans, it was believed their gods literally dwelled in their temples. That was their home, and their temples contained them. But God cannot be contained. 
even the heaven of heavens cannot contain him, much less this house. Rather than requesting that God reside in the temple, Solomon prayed that his eyes would be toward the temple and that God would listen to his personal dedicatory prayer and to the subsequent, subsequent prayers of the people of Israel. He further established that God's true dwelling place is in the heavens, from which Solomon anticipated God would grant forgiveness and justice, restoration, provision, protection, and victory over pain and grief. He asked if a stranger, meaning a non-Jew, prayed towards the temple, that God would hear and answer their prayers so that the nations might also know about the power of God of this house. Solomon began the conclusion of his dedicatory prayer by recognizing God's word and his presence as represented by the stone tablets in the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant had arrived at its resting place with the intention that it never again be transported from place to place as it had been in the wilderness or to be situated again in a temporary dwelling place as it had been at Gibeon. The final words of Solomon's prayer ask God to show favor to your anointed, which seems to be a reference to himself and to your loving kindness and faithfulness to your servant David. It is an insert here titled, An Absurdity. This is a church without prayer is an absurdity. It does not exist. It may be a warm corpse, but it is dead. Prayer breathes life into the soul of the church. It is necessary, or it is the means by which the Spirit guides and empowers the church. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our, be our bodies and in the church body so that we can be led by the Holy Spirit to do what is right in God's eyes. We can't do it on our own. We're incapable of understanding God's will and God's ways apart from the Holy Spirit. And so my prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit indwell you so that you might know the will of God for your life and walk worthily before him and bring glory and honor to his name by your obedience to the one true God of Israel, Yahweh, Elohim, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and his Holy Spirit, the triune God, is seeking you. Go to him now while he can be found. Have a wonderfully blessed day.